Okay. Okay, so I guess we'll just have to start recording from here. Sorry, Peter, you, we, we missed the first part. I don't know, might be better. Amen. Amen. So let's move on past that there, because I think I beat that horse up pretty well. Um, let's come over here. So tonight, we are at the spirit of the fear of the Lord. I've heard some people say, that it's not really fear, it's more of a reverence. And I've even talked that. And, and it's not completely wrong. But I got to tell you, I reverence God. But I'm also afraid of him. I'm terrified to hurt one of you. I'm terrified to hurt one of, one of God's kids by teaching Amen, them Jesus. the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, just, just straight up shaking in my boots, terrified. Amen, I've seen what God does to people that do that. I've seen it firsthand. I've seen what God has done to people that have, that have uh, come against me. I've seen what God does to people that, you know, that, that, you know, that teach the word. I've, I've seen what God does to people that hurt other Christians. And I am terrified. I, I, I'm scared to death. I, I, I no. I'd rather just shut up and stay home and watch CSI than, uh, than to teach one false thing or to, or to hurt one of God's kids in any way. Amen. Amen. So there Amen. is a healthy fear of the Lord. I'm not afraid of him as in to where I don't, I'm afraid to approach him. Amen. And neither should you be, but, but we should be afraid when it comes to, when it comes to violating him, when it comes to doing things that are against his will, when it comes to, when it comes to sinning against the Lord or hurting one of his kids or not walking in the love that, that he is, that he's called us to walk in, that he's put in us to walk in. Uh, there should be a fear. There should be a fear. There also should be a reverence. There should be an awe and a wonder about, about the things of God. If we're not in awe about the things of God, then are we, are we really, are we really walking in the presence of God? If we're walking in the presence of God, then, then just his presence alone is going to is going to cause us to is going to cause us to 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 be at awe um, about him, amen. Because it's so much greater than anything we could ever even think of, amen. That if you're not in awe of him, uh, you're probably not paying attention to him, amen. Amen. So there should be, there should be that reverence as well. You know, too much of uh, too much has caused us to to be irreverent to God uh, to just think that we can just approach the king the way we want you know the the Bible shows us um, quite clearly exactly how we're to approach the king there's only one way to approach the king and the Bible teaches us exactly what that way is God is very very accommodating. He's he's designed his whole his whole thing around he's designed the whole thing around the people that he's calling to him. I'm gonna say that again. He's designed his entire plan around the people that he's calling to him. In other words, uh, his his plan is designed to accommodate you to to allow you to come to him. But at the same time, we have to we have to. Uh, Come to him in reverence. You don't just uh, you don't just go up to a king um, any old way that you want to. Amen. You, you approach them in reverence. Amen. You approach them in respect. Hallelujah. Thank you. Lord. Amen. Amen. So our Father God has said, "Look, I'm giving you a way to approach me. 
you need to come that way. I'm giving you a way yeah. that you understand that you can approach me. We have a hard time in this country because we don't have kings. Uh, we don't, you know, we have presidents and or governors and and we like to mouth off about them and and talk trash. I'm I'm just as big about that as anybody else. Um, but we but but nonetheless we have we you know we have uh, uh, we don't have monarchs. We don't have kings. Amen. We don't we don't have that here, so we don't really understand what that's all about. Amen. Um, watch King Arthur. I don't know. I don't know. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Maria. All right. I have to send you that gift card to, for Marie Calendar. Beep, beep. <laughs> Amen. So, so it's a, the, the spirit of holy reverence and respect to the awesomeness and the majesty of God. This will cause us to hate sin. Remember, when we came to the Lord, we came in with some baggage. And he said, look, I've already, I've already dealt with the baggage. I've already dealt with these things. You just, need to, you just need to sweep the house. You just need to take care of them, kick them on out. OK, and I'm, I'm not even going to let you do that by yourself. I'm not even going to make you do that by yourself. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you help. I'm going to give you I'm going to give you part of me. I'm going to give you my spirit that uh, I'm give you Holy Spirit, my spirit that that is God. And I'm going to put him in you and he's going to help you do these things. I'm going to give you I'm going to give you something that I never gave to Elijah. I never gave to Moses. I didn't give to Adam. I didn't give. I didn't give to these. Before, they were before you because then they had my spirit with them. Then they had my spirit on them. But you're going to have my spirit in you to help you to, to bring you to this place. We've got a thing. We've got a thing, y'all. That 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 they only dreamt about in the Old Testament. They they, they desired it, but they couldn't attain it in the Old Testament because Jesus hadn't come and He hadn't died yet. He hadn't redeemed the world. He hadn't redeemed mankind back to back to the state that they've been. Amen. So so God said, "Look, I'm putting my Spirit in you, which is greater than even what Adam had." Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord oh, God. God. Ooh, thank you. Hallelujah. Oh, God. And, they, and this is going to help you if you listen to him. He's going to help you by thank bringing you to that place that you can just sweep all this stuff out of your life. Thank you, Father. Oh, yes, Lord, Lord, have mercy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. That spirit of fear is a spirit of reverence, the spirit of respect and awesomeness. Amen. To where we see God from who he, from who he truly is. Amen. It will cause us to hate sin. If you still have, if you're still in bed with sin, if you're still enjoying the things that that uh, that you know are sinful, um, well, it might be an issue there. You might you might want to go to God and say, "Look, I, I I'm supposed to I'm supposed to not like this, but I still do." Right. Don't lie to him. He already knows. Amen. He already knows. He knows that you'd like it. He knows. So just go to him and tell him to look, say, say, Father, I, I, I'm not supposed to like this sin, but I, but I do. I kind of like it, um, but I don't want to like it. Amen. Amen. I don't want to like it anymore. I want I want to be like you. I want I want to glorify you. I don't want to like this thing. I want to I want your I want your image to be in me and on me. Amen. Amen. And just confess it to him and say, Lord, help me with this thing. Take the taste out of my mouth. Take the desire from my heart for this thing. I don't want this thing anymore. I don't want to like it, but I do like it. Are, are you following what I'm saying? Amen. Sometimes you just have to do what you got to do. And you have to, you know, you, you just have to be real with God. He's not, he's not looking for perfection. Not, no, he, he's already made you perfect. He's not looking for you to be perfect. He's already made you perfect. I know that's kind of it's kind of confusing, but um, but that's that's really the way it is. He's 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 caused you to be perfect in his sight. He's given you the the the, the power and the tools to live an overcoming life, and he's he's given you the guidance to do that. He's given you everything you need to live this this life of 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 Zoe life, this this overcoming life this godly life before him. He's given you everything that you need for it. And he's called you perfect. He's called you whole. He's called you clean. 
oh, what? So we don't have, we don't have to hang out out here anymore. Well, I don't know if you can see that, probably too small. So we don't have to hang out out there in the, in the, in the outer court anymore. We can go on in. We don't have to be dealing with sin all the time in our life anymore. We can go on in. Why? Because he's already cleansed us from all sin and given us the, given us the water of the word to begin to, to begin to transform our minds, to begin to transform our heart, to, to come into that place where, where now we're, we're not dealing with that sin anymore. Now we can just come on in. And when we do, oh, my Lord, it, he causes us to walk in love and in truth. Are, are you seeing this thing? He causes us to walk in love because he's filled us with his love. The Bible says that the fruit of the Spirit in Ephesians, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's Ephesians, says the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, gentleness, meekness, long-suffering, um, forbearance. Against us, there is no law. There's, there's a couple more in there, too. There are nine altogether that are named there. But I submit to you that the fruit of the Spirit is love, that it manifests itself in those nine different ways. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. Everything that Jesus tells us to do, he, he, he commands us uh, to do in love. Love your neighbor. Love those that persecute you. Do good to them. Don't curse them. Pray for them. What? You mean the people that are cussing me out, the people that are, that are trying to get me fired from my job? You mean the, the people that are, that are coming against me, those that are talking behind my back at the church? I'm supposed, to, I'm supposed to be nice to them? I'm supposed to be good to them? Yes. Elder Derry, you kill, yes. them, with kind, you kill them with kindness. That's right. It always, it, always, you know, it always works for me. Yeah, you know, the Bible says that whenever you do that, you're, you're heaping coals of fire on their head. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. I like to remember that whenever, whenever, you know, I have to be nice to an enemy. Um, I like to remember that by being nice, I'm actually heaping coals of fire on their head. I don't know if maybe I'm messing up by that. I don't know. Um, hopefully pray for me. Um, amen. Amen. So amen. the partnership of God will be seen in you when God's, when the fear of the Lord is, is evident in your heart. When you, when you have a healthy fear of God, when you have a healthy respect for God, when, when you've allowed him, oh, what's the word I'm trying to think of? When you've allowed him license to have his way in your life, it's going to be evident that you're in partnership with God. It's going to be evident in your life. It's not just, you're not going to be the only one that notices. You may not even notice. I know there's some things that in my life that I didn't even notice until people came up to me and told me. I'm like, really? Um, okay. Uh, but it, amen. It's like when, when Nebuchadnezzar, he approached the opening in the blazing furnace. Remember when he threw Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego um, in, the, in the fiery furnace? He said, he said, the servants of the Most High God, come out, come up here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the fire. Nebuchadnezzar, who represents the evil one, who represents the world, recognized that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were not alone, that they were there with God, that they were in partnership with God because of their reverence to God, because, because they, they would rather die than, than bow down to anyone other than God. They would rather die than to worship any, any false God. Amen. But we will just do what we got to do because, you know, it gets a little, gets a little hard. Oh, there's coming a time, y'all, that... Um, it's going to get rough. It's going to get rough. And if you're not in this place with God, if you're not, if you're not in this place where you, you have a reverence with God, if, you're not, if your relationship with God 
is is just shucking and jiving and, and you haven't you haven't prayed since uh you know mm -mm. since 1973 um, uh -oh. then then you're gonna have a hard time getting through the storms that are getting ready to come but the storms that are getting ready to come in this country oh we we look at other countries we look at Afghanistan, what's going on over there? They're killing folk over there because they're praying to God. They're killing folk over there because they have a Bible. They're killing folk over there because they're 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 claiming the name of Jesus. Okay, you want to be a Christian? We'll kill you now. They're killing folk for it. There's stuff coming to this country. Oh, all over the world. But to this country, we think, oh, we're in America. You know, this can't happen here. Oh, yeah, it can. Uh, I don't know if you've noticed or not, but America's changing. Mucho. It's changing. This is not the America I grew up in. It, there's, it's changing. Um, and not for the better. Amen. Uh, and, if, and if we're not, if we're not secure in our relationship with God, we're not going to navigate through it. We're going to fall into some pits. We're going to fall into some, some serious mistakes. We're going, to be, we're going to be navigating with our own ocular vision and not with the light of the Holy Spirit. We're, we're, not, going to be able to, we're, we're not going to be able to avoid some of the things that, that, uh, that have been sent. Uh, the enemy has sent some things your way. He sent some things my way to take us out, to keep us from the finish line, to keep us from... Uh, uh, walking in that place that God has for us, and if we're not if we're not close to God, uh, if we're not if we're not dealing with our relationship with Jesus Christ now, we can't wait till tomorrow to do it. You don't wait till the engine blows in your car before you put the oil in. You put the oil in before it, before it goes. You put the oil in to prevent it from going. Oh Lord, have mercy. You don't wait till your car runs out of gas before you go to the gas station. Well, hopefully, I mean, I have a few times when I was younger. Hopefully, you know, we don't do that anymore. A amen. But the idea is, is we don't wait until we need the illumination to navigate life. We begin to walk in the illumination to navigate life now. If we wait, if we wait to develop our prayer life, if we wait to develop our, our relationship with Christ, if we wait until hell breaks loose and is going to break loose, if we wait till that happens, we're 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 up a creek without a paddle, as my my folks used to say. Um, because there's no way that we're going to hear. There's no way that we're going to hear from the Lord. Our, our minds are going to be too used to, to, to hearing from other sources. Amen. Our minds are going to be too used to hearing from the, from the canopy of, of, of the evilness that's over this world. That's why it's so imperative that we get into, we, we start praying now. Get in now. Now. Not tomorrow. Don't wait till tomorrow. Now. Now is the time. I've heard people preach that now is the time to get saved, not tomorrow. Yeah, even, even, even that we're saved, now is the time to begin to, 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 to get right with God. I know a lot of people in church that aren't right with God. They're saved. I'm not saying they're not saved. They, you know, but but they're not right. They're, 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 they're shucking and jiving. They're playing games with God. And if we're going to play games, we're not going to hear from him. We need to hear from him. He's got a plan for us. We need to hear from him. He's, he's, he's put us in this earth for this time. This time it's this coming. He's put us in this earth for this time. He's got a plan for each and every one of us. But if we're not listening to him, if we're listening to other things, whether it be the news, whether it be to law and order, um, I'm bad about law and order. I love law and order. But if it, you know, no matter what it is, if we're not listening to him, if, if we're not, if we're not praying, if we're not talking to him every day, if we're not, 
if we're not dealing with our relationship with him every day, if we're not going to him and saying, Lord, I, I, I'm in your word and I, and I see in your word, Lord, that, that, this, that this, uh, this attitude I have, um, I didn't think there was anything wrong with it, but it looks like it's wrong. It looks like in your word, you, you're saying that I, that I need to, I need to get past this thing. I need your help, Lord, because, you know, this is an attitude that's, that's dealt me, that's dealt me a good car all my life. And, 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 and Lord has it's kept people away. It's kept, it's kept, it's kept me safe all my life, but I see that I'm not supposed to be a loner. I'm not supposed to be in this, mm -hmm. in this place that, that, that I need to change this attitude, but God, I, I need your help. Yes. Amen. Uh, are, are you following me? And we have to do this stuff. Now we have to examine Amen. ourselves now. Am I, am I, am I where God wants me to be? I have to do this now. I can't wait till we get on the racetrack. The, 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 you know, NASCAR doesn't wait till they get on the racetrack to tune up the engine. That's right. They do it ahead of time. Are you are you following with me? We can't Elder wait. Jay? Amen. Somebody said Elder, something. What? Yeah, I I, I want to just uh, what the Holy Spirit downloaded was the parable of the ten virgins. Okay. So, like, you know, we know that five were ready and five were not. Five had the oil. Five didn't. So. Are we going to have the oil, people, or we're not going to have no oil? Right. That's it. Bottom line. We'll talk about the oil, Maria. Don't Holy leave them hanging. Some, some, of them don't, some of them don't understand what the oil is. No, no. We're all gang people. <laughs> we, know, we know the Holy Spirit. I'm not the teacher. I'm too shy. Okay. <laughs> But that's what downloaded. That's what was downloaded. Amen. Shy. Excuse me. Uh, she's not shy. I've seen her on the street. <laughs> she, she's, not, she's not shy. I'm in the that's street, why she, That's why she's the missionary. <laughs> yeah. Amen, Jesus. But but yeah, that's a that's a great that's a great uh, that's a great scripture. The the ten virgins. You know the story in the Bible where there are ten virgins waiting for the coming of the Lord. All 10 were pure. All 10 were born again. All 10 were saved. Five were serious about their life. Five were serious about, about their relationship with God. They, they oh. kept their, their lanterns full of oil. And what this, what this means is they, they, kept their, they kept their relationship. Uh, they kept up with God. They, they, were, they were talking. They, they kept in the word. They, they, they were full of oil. They were full of the things that, that they needed. Amen. They, they were full of the life of God. Amen. Because they 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 put a focus on their relationship with God. They put a focus on the word of God. They they put a focus on God. For the other five, they were just, you know, okay, I'm gonna focus on uh I go to church um and I praise and worship and I'm on the worship team and, and I do that and, and it's all good. Uh so I'm just gonna kind of chill uh -oh. and, and go to the club on Friday. Um, and then I'll go to church on Sunday and it'll be all right. Um, well, when the bridegroom came, five of those 10 virgins yep. came on in. The other five had to go away. Uh, they got left out. Amen. Amen. Just like when, just, just like it, when Noah uh, you know, yeah. when Noah was in the ark, you know, he was, you, you know, he was telling people about the rain. Uh, most people, other people, he'd be like, you know, yeah, all right, you just go ahead. Just go ahead with your, with yourself. Um, anyway, and, and, and then, and then it came time and the Lord closed the door of the ark. After everyone was on the ark that God had intended to be on the ark, the Lord closed the door. Once the door's closed, that's it. Amen. Ooh. I didn't know we were going this way tonight, but hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Good stuff. We're to completely eliminate the kingdom of darkness's influence. You know, before we come into, into before we come in, into Christ, the only influence we have is the kingdom of darkness. The, the the enemy is not going to influence you with uh, demons that spin their head around and throw up vomit, green stuff, and you know, 
and toss the priest out the window. And, and you know, you, you, you seen the movie. Um, that's not, I mean, that's, that's a movie. In reality, he comes to you and he says, did God really say? Oh, you don't need Jesus to go to heaven. You could find him with Buddha. You can get to heaven through Nirvana. Uh oh. You can get to heaven through through you know just just be Zen, just do yoga, just you know he'll come to you with all kind of different ways, and it's all a demonic influence to keep you away from the influence of God. To keep you away from the influence of God. Oh, what? And we are to completely eliminate the kingdom of darkness, the influence of the kingdom of darkness. Look around you. The kingdom of darkness influences everything, everywhere. The Bible says he's the prince of the power of the air. Now, it says that he's the prince of the power of the air 2,000 plus years ago. Before they had airwaves, or before they knew anything about airwaves anyway. Amen? Before they knew anything about radio, before they knew anything about television, before they knew anything about airwaves, um, he was called the prince of the power of the air. Because he, 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 he's over the minds, he's over the influence of every single human being until they come into Christ. When we come into Christ... Now we're given a different nature. Now we, we, we begin to see that, oh, there's some things that are different now. There's, I'm beginning to think different now. I'm beginning to understand different now. Um, I still kind of like the old way, you know, so we remember that old thing. Well, he says, look, we, you, have to, you have to come out of that. You can't stay in that. You have to come out of that. Um, and there's good reason to come out of that. He said, but you have to come on out of that because you're being influenced by the wrong by the wrong uh, influencer. And if you're influenced by the wrong influencer, then you will be fighting on the wrong army. You'll be thinking you're in the right army when you're really in the wrong army. Oh, think about that one for a minute. Chew on that one. Amen. I like what Elder D was talking about last, uh, last Sunday when she said, just chew on it. You know, like a cow chews its cud. Just start chewing on that and then burp it up, chew on it some more. And, you know, just start thinking about it. Start applying it in your life. Start, just start, you know, uh, amen, amen. So we have to come out of that. And, and we have to break down the altars. That's get rid of the presence. Amen. Anything that we have that, that reminds us of that old way, we need to get rid of it. What? Yeah. I didn't get rid of my, I didn't get rid of my, rid of my dealer's phone number. Oh, what? I did. Problem was, it was up here. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, I, I had it memorized. And yeah, so so yeah, that was funny. hard. That was, that was renew hard. Renew your mind, brother. Yeah, I had to renew it. Yeah, I still remember it, too. And I'm thinking, oh, wow. Um, you can't tell the truth. Elder, I'm, tell the truth. Shame but I don't ponder on it. I don't chew on it. I don't think about it. Are, are, you, are you following Amen. If I did, I'd probably come up with it, but you know, I wouldn't call it because um, I just don't want that life anymore. Um, amen. So we have to break down the altars. That's to get rid of the presence. We have to smash the sacred stones. Forget their influence. Oh, cut down their Ashtaroth poles. Oh, that's misspelled. It should be Ashtaroth. Um, it means to, to destroy every connection. Oh, thank you, Father. Destroy every connection, every connection you have with that old life, every connection you have that reminds you um, of the old way that, that, that you know now is not God. We have, to, we have to separate ourselves from them. Amen. We have to burn the idols with fire. That's to bring judgment on them. Now, that doesn't mean that we pass judgment on the people, but we pass judgment on the sin. And it's not even that we're judging the sin. The sin has already been judged. But we're, but we're coming to agreement with God's judgment on that sin and saying, God has judged that. I don't want to be in that. Are, are you following me? I like to use an example of, of, of a junkyard. Anybody ever been to a junkyard? Uh, I've been to a junkyard a few times. You know, in a junkyard, they got a bunch of cars. 
and and the cars you know sometimes they'll pick them for parts and and when they get done picking them for parts they smash them down and they use the metal they they recycle the metal uh are, are you following me and if you're in that old picked apart car and you're taking a nap in that old picked apart car when they pick it up to smash it they didn't want to smash you. Their intent wasn't to smash you, but you're going to get smashed right along with it because the intent was to destroy the car, not the person in it. And, and it's the same thing with God. The intent is to destroy and to judge the sin, not the people. But when we're when we're when we're hell bent on on staying in this thing that God has judged, that He's already passed judgment on, and and when He destroys that sin, if we're in it, we'll be destroyed along with it. Don't don't you. Amen. Oh, Lord, have mercy. We have to judge those things that we that we have loved. Oh, what? You have loved some of the ways that you have that you have loved that you you know are not of God, and you know that God is calling you out of. You have to judge those things and say, yep, that's wrong in God's eyes. God is destroying that. I don't want to be a part of that. And, and begin to begin to break down the altars, begin to destroy the connections with it, begin to begin to come out of that thing. Uh, are you following me? Anybody? Hey, you know, why do you need to be separate from the works of the enemy? Well, that's, I don't even think we should have to get into this part, but um, you're a people. You've been called by a holy and righteous God to walk holy and righteous before him. You've Amen. been called. You've been given, you, my God, out of all the billions of people in the earth, he picked you. Thank you. I want you to think about that. Out of Thank the billions and billions of people in this earth, there's it, just, just in California, in California, there are 44 million, I think it's 44 million people in California. And out of those 44 million, he chose you. He said, I want you. I, I picked you to walk in my statutes. I pick you to be known by my name. I pick you. I'm calling you into this thing. He didn't necessarily call you neighbor. He didn't necessarily call the people down the street. He didn't necessarily call you best friend, but he called you. He said, I'm picking you. He chose you to be, to be his. Oh, and he did that before the foundation of the world. He did that before there was a planet to put you on. You got to see that part. Oh, Lord have mercy. He, oh, and, amen. You're a people. Uh, you're a people uh, holy to the Lord. God has privileged you to serve his purpose. It's a privilege. It's an honor to be able to go before God and make requests before God. And it, it still blows my mind that he actually does it. It blows my mind that he actually, that when, when I, when I uh, it, it blows my mind when I make a request to him, and he grants it. it. It just, it's still to this day, to this day, it blows my mind. It really does. But he does that because he, he chose me. He chose me in him before the foundation of the world. Just like he chose you. I'm no different than you. I'm a little uglier than you, but I, I'm no different than you. Amen. Um, the Lord, your God has chosen you out of all the people on the face of the earth. God has set you apart for divine mandate. Lord have mercy. He's called you to be his people. God has made you his own, his treasured possession. You are very special in God's eyes. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm, I'm, I'm at a loss for words. I don't know what else we could say to that. God has given you everything that you need to walk upright. Amen. He's given you every tool that you need to, 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 to walk in holiness and purity. He's even made you holy. He had made me holy. I'm still doing this. I'm still doing that. Well, God bless you. He still made you holy. We're not holy because of what we do. We're holy because of what he did. And he's made you holy. He's given you a right to approach him. You can't approach him if you're not holy. Okay, let's just think about that one for a minute. 
You can't even approach a holy God if you're not holy. Man. So the first thing that had to happen is he had to make you holy. Uh, second thing that had to happen. First <laughs> thing that had to happen is you can't approach a father unless you're in the family. Man. What? You can't go to the father unless you're one of his kids. Amen. Think about that. Your kids may have friends, and when they come over, um, and you, you're nice to them because they're your kids' friends. Maybe you're not. So maybe you're not nice to them. I don't know. You, you pick. <laughs> but, but your kids have friends, and if they're not part of the family. They don't have a right to come and, and make demands, uh, make requests of the family resource. Are, 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 are you following what I'm saying here? Only your kids do. So the first thing he had to do is make you part of the family, and he did. In the Old Testament, only Israel Israel was the only country, was the only, they, they were the family. Everybody else was Gentile. Everybody else was outsiders. If, if the, there was a provision where if they came in and they, and they adopted the way of Israel and they, uh, you know, and they, they, then they could become kind of an adopted part of the family. Okay? So there was even redemption then. But for the most part, you had to be part of the family. You had to be born in Israel. So when Jesus died, he said, whosoever will, whosoever will call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That means that you're Israel now, you're family, you're God's children now. That gives you a right to ask for resources that are part of the family. Amen. He's made you holy, so now you can go before him. You don't have to ask anybody else to do it for you. Well, can you pray for me, brother, because I'm having this issue? Pray for yourself. I mean, oh. we'll pray for you, but I mean, you know, uh, you can still pray for yourself. Amen. I still pray for people, but they can pray for themselves. Amen. Uh, are you following me? Because you're, you've been made holy. Why is my life? It doesn't look holy to me. Um, well, you know, um, that's okay. It may not look like it, but it is like it. Because that's what Jesus did. He made you holy. He, he adopted you. He made you part of the family. And he made you holy. He cleaned you up. Yes. You know, he, gave you, he gave you all the tools that you need. He gave you yes. all the tools that you need to walk in, 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 this, in this life that he's called you to walk in. Over the past several weeks, we've talked about some of these tools. We've talked about, uh, we've talked in depth. We've talked about it. Amen. Thank you, Lord God. Thank now you. It's up, now, now it's up to us. It's up to us to apply these things to our life. It's up to us to, to go before the Lord and say, and say God, you know, I, I, I've still got this stuff in my life. I've still got, you know, I still like some stuff. I still, I still like this other stuff that I know is not of you. I need your help. I need your help. We have to be honest before God. We can't just bury your head in the sand and think, okay, well, God took care of it. No, he took care of the, he took care of the entry price. He, he took care of the ticket in. But it's up to us to walk in this, in this place that he's called us. It's up to us because we're going to be here on this planet a little bit longer. And if we're not hearing his voice, his voice lines up with this book. If we're not hearing his voice, first off, if we don't, if we don't understand this book, if we don't know what's in this book, then we're not going to know if that's his voice or if that's the voice of another. 
Because let me tell you, the enemy will bring a voice to you. You brought a voice to Jesus, he'll bring a voice to you. The Bible says that he can, he can come to you like an angel of light. He can, he can make you think he's, he's, he's good. At it. He's been doing it forever. Um, he's really good at it. He tricked a third of the angels who stood in the presence of God. Um, he can certainly trick you and I. That's why it's so important that we know what's in this book. When the enemy came to Jesus on the, on the, in the wilderness, he brought, he brought some word with him. He said, he said, oh, just throw yourself off this cliff because the word says that the angels won't even let you stub your toe. I mean, he said that, right? Mm-hmm. And if Jesus didn't know the word, I mean, he was the word. He is the word. I was. He is the word. But if Jesus Man. didn't know the word, um, if you and I don't know the word, when the enemy comes and quotes it to us, oh, he will. He'll quote it to you. He'll quote you word. He'll bring someone to you to, to quote you a Bible scripture, and it'll be just a little bit off. Just a little bit off. But if you're not familiar with what's in this book, if you if you haven't hid his word, the Bible says, I've hidden my word in my heart that I might not sin against you. If you haven't hidden that word in your heart, that means to take it and to, and to put it in, in a place of, of uh, chewing on it and, and putting it in a place of, 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 of love and respect in your heart. If we haven't done that, then he's going to come with, with a word and kind of twist us up a little bit and get us off course, just a little bit off course. A little bit off course is all we need to get, uh, and we can end up way off course. If you start drawing a straight line, but you're drawing a straight line from one place to another, if you're just a little bit off, you're not going to end up where you were supposed to end up. Amen. Amen. You construction. Hallelujah. You'll understand that one. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Father, tonight I just want to lift up, I want to lift up each and every one of these beautiful people, Lord, and I ask you, God, just to make yourself real. Show them that they can approach you. You've made them holy. You've adopted them in your family. You've given them the tools that they need, God. Begin to, begin to work in them, Lord. Begin to show them, God, that, that there is a better way. Holy Spirit, shout to each one of us. Don't let us miss your voice. Don't let us not hear your voice. Don't let us pretend we didn't hear. But shout to us. Hit us with a two-by-four if you got to do that, Lord. I give you permission in my life. To just, just hit me upside the head with a two by four. Get my yeah. attention. Sometimes I get stubborn. Sometimes I don't want to listen. Sometimes I just want to do what I want to do. But I know that doesn't glorify you, God. And I know you're in there. I know you're talking to me, Lord. And sometimes I, I just want to pretend like I'm not listening. Help me, Lord. I need to know your voice. I need to, I need to have your voice clear to me where I'm not fooled by the enemy, to where I'm not fighting on the wrong army, to where I'm not, I'm, I'm not on the wrong team, Lord, when it counts. Help us tonight, God. Help us tonight, Lord, to, to put your word to work in our lives, to begin to separate ourselves from our old self, to begin to, to, begin to separate ourselves from those things that you've, that you've called us out of. Your word says you've called us out of the world and into your marvelous light. You've called us out of something and into something. We're not coming out of something just to be out, but we're coming out to go in. I thank you tonight, God. I thank you so much, Lord, that you've chosen us. 
billions of other people too. I'm not leaving them out. But here, Lord, in this in this room, you've chosen us. Mm. You didn't have to choose us, but you did. Help us, Lord, to live lives that are pure and holy. Help us, Lord, to walk in a way that's circumspect before you, where people will see your glory upon us. They'll see that partnership between God and man in each and every one of us. We won't have to tell them anything. They'll just see it. That's where I want to be. And I know that's where these, these beautiful people want to be too. Lord, tonight I also don't want to forget to lift up Peter to you. He's in a lot of pain tonight, God. He, he called me and he told me that he was in a lot of pain. And that he wouldn't be here because of that. So, Father, I send your word. You sent your word and you healed every disease. So tonight, Lord, we, we as, a, as, a, as a company of people, as a body before you, God, we send your word. And we speak to that pain. We rebuke that pain in the name of Jesus. You got to go. You get up off of Peter. Yes. You leave him be. You let him rest. You let him sleep. In yes. the name of Jesus, pain, you can't stay. You've got to go. Hallelujah. Uh, yes. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Ah, oh, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We send forth your word, Lord, tonight yes. to touch Peter. Yes. Touch him in a way, Lord, that, that he didn't even know he could be touched. Yes. His, his, his light is beginning to come. He, he's beginning to see these things as, as you've declared them, not as man has declared them, but as you've declared them, God. Hallelujah. Mm. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Ah, thank you, Lord. Thank you. He has a right to the healing, Lord. You said yes. that this is the bread, it's the right, it's the right of the children. Thank you. It's not something that they have to beg for. It's something that they have a right to just reach out and take. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. So, Lord, tonight, we declare healing upon Peter. Yes. We declare healing. Yes, hallelujah. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. His right. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank, Thank you, you, Lord. Thank you, Dad. Thank touching you. Peter right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, yes, Lord. Thank you, Father. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father. Mm. Amen. Thank you, God. We declare it now. We declare it, God. We have to strengthen healing virtue in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Mm. Supernatural strength and healing virtue in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I believe. I believe. Yes. I believe what this book says. Amen. Amen. I believe it. I believe every promise in it to in it is promised to me. I believe it. Amen. Yes. I believe it says it says that, that if I believe that I will lay my hands on the sick and they will recover. Amen. I'm just dumb enough to believe that too. Hallelujah. I believe it. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hmm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You're worthy to be praised, oh God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. And thank you for Peter's healing right now in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Father. Yes. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Father. 
Now, Lord, we're asking for a testimony next week. Lord, we're asking for people yes. to come yes. and, and say, you know, uh, I, I was in pain, and then all of a sudden the pain just lifted. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank ah. you. Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you. Hallelujah. Uh, we're looking for that testimony next week, Lord. Yes. Not for us, Lord, but they yes. might be glorified. Yes, we declare victory in Peter's body yes, right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. We declare victory. Hallelujah. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Thank Hallelujah. You. Thank you, Father, for your mercy, your grace, for your healing virtue. You all the honor and glory and praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank True you. story. Yep. Good class. Hallelujah. Calling all artistic people. I'm working on flyers. Cool. Yeah. Phoenix. So I'm calling all artistic people because um, I have the artistic ability of a, of a slug. Um, and that's not very much. That's not very. Do you have some type of computer program? I can make stick people. <laughs> <laughs> a, a, a computer program yeah but you got to know what to put in that computer program yeah but if you stuff. have the software it's easy if you don't have the software you might as well draw it with your hands i don't have the software but i want to make um i've got i want to put the the logo in it okay. um and and basically advertise this bible study yeah oh, okay amen okay. That's actually um, easy. You just import the logo to. Okay, so I'm calling on all artistic people. Okay. Um, amen. So anybody that's got artistic inclinations, um, or just wants to give a hack at it, um, right? Maybe we'll do a contest. What do you think? Elder Jerry, why don't you just put it on the Redeem page at Golden Altars? Period. That's well, it. because the Redeem page at Golden Altar, it, it speaks to the Redeem. Golden altar people in San Jose. You're still <laughs> redeemed in Sacramento. I'm trying. I'm trying to fill up my living room here in, in Sacramento. Yeah, oh, okay. he doesn't want, you don't want to take any kingdom people from here. Yeah, yeah, because you got. I mean, you can come. You y'all are invited anyway, and you are my redeemed page at Golden Altar. You can invite whoever you want. Amen. You know, y'all are invited anyway. Um, I'm just trying to get people here to know that. We're here. You, are, are you following me? Yes. Yes, sir. Sense? Yes. Sir. So I'm. So I'm, I'm looking to put. It, I'm looking to put a flyer together. Um, so anybody that is interested in demonstrating your artisticness. Okay. I'm. I'm gonna. I'm gonna have to get you to email me your your. Um, the logo. Do you have the. Yeah, your logo. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. Yeah, so I can I do. download it into my computer. I do. Right here. Pastor Mike and I did that. That's oh, okay. Yeah. There you go, Pastor Mike. He'd do it for you. He's better at that than I am. Yeah, but he's busy. He, he, he's busy. He's doing, he's doing all kinds of stuff. It's gotten very busy at Golden Altars lately. Yeah. At least I've no. gotten busy here. Yeah, Ever since he, you left, Elder Jerry. That's what I'm hearing. That's what I'm hearing. You know, it's a I mean, true, like, true story. I Nobody do can't anything. do any technology without you. I didn't exactly. do anything. Kenny's real good at it. Yeah, mm -hmm. he is. Kenny's real good at it. We we'll just have to bug him from now on. Have to bug Kenny. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. 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 So it looks like grandma didn't come, so we can't embarrass her tonight. So. Again? 
Oh, I better stop the recording.